What's up guys, it's Bromley at Empire Barbell, and today we're gonna talk about different types of loading, specifically step loading. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the t-shirt link at the bottom. We have some new t-shirt logos up, our store is live. But even if you're not interested in buying anything, just take a look at the designs, let me know what you think. I'm always looking for feedback because your guys' feedback and support means a ton to me, so I appreciate it. Now, getting into step loading, we have a few different basic principles when it comes to progressing in any type of program. And these patterns are gonna be seen in many different types of programs. So once you kind of know what to look for, you'll see that light bulb go off every time you read an ebook or kind of dig through some other training progression they haven't seen before. There really isn't a lot new under the sun. So it's important to pick these all apart and know how they actually work and how they're put together. So the most common one, the backbone of everything is linear. Linear loading means that you're making steady, continuous increases in one or more variables in the training program. We're talking about linearly increasing the load. We're talking about making set increases in weight from session to session in a very predictable and methodical way. It might be a simple linear progression where the sets and reps stay the same, but it's just five to 10 pounds every single time you repeat the workout. Uh, sometimes it goes by percentage. I mean, a lot of old school powerlifting programs are based around a classical linear methodology, which basically means this trend of linearity continues on uninterrupted. So percentages increase consistently session to session. And in a classical linear setup, volume decreases in a completely uninterrupted linear fashion. Now, linearity is the backbone of all training. Everything has a linearity to it. You can't remove it. So the question of how linear something is kind of has this context to it of how uninterrupted is this progression? Because even a linear method over a 16 week powerlifting prep, for instance, it still resets when you're done with the meet. So it's just a matter of how frequently you reset. How often is this pattern seen? Wave loading means that we jump a bit more aggressively in a shorter time frame, and we repeatedly drop back and build back up. Instead of linearly increasing the load without any interruption, now we're adding in this quick build up and drop back and reset. And every time it resets by a set amount. So now going from, let's say the 60 to 65%, 70 to 75, 80 to 85. So now it happens in this three week cycle and you can wave over different time periods. You can use different rep ranges and percentages. This is just an example, but you would do a quick build up going from 60 to 70 to 80%. That's a pretty dramatic build up in a short period of time. And it's not sustainable. If you kept trying to do that aggressive jump, you would hit a brick wall very fast. So instead you drop back, and the net effect is you get the benefit of hanging out in this uh, percentage range for a much longer period of time. So it's a way to kind of solidify your mastery of that range. And what you'll find is that the frequent exposure to heavier and then lighter loads and varying volumes tends to allow you to come out the other side a little bit better at the end of each wave. So I like this for aggressive buildups. I actually use a wave for my deadlift. When I peaked for my last two shows, I had a ton of success because deadlifting specifically is a lift where I need to get heavy practice, but I can't train heavy week in, week out. So recovery is a big factor. Because we're starting so light and taking bigger jumps, every third week in my deadlift was kind of my heavy test week where I would load up the weight and try to hit a heavy triple where week one might be a pretty easy five by three. Week two would be a moderately challenging three by three. And then week three, I would throw on some weight and try to hit a three rep max. I would either deload or reset and wave back up. And every time I would find that the weight moved a little bit better, a little bit faster. And it was the right mix of heavy touches with practice reps and recovery. So it seemed to be a very kind of well-balanced approach for me for that list specifically. Now you'll see these percentages and rep ranges aren't quite the same, but these are these patterns are similar. This is juggernaut and this is basically 531. Just the, the percentages aren't the same, but conceptually the pattern's the same. Juggernaut goes, if you're in the eights phase, five by eight, three by eight, and then as many reps as you can at eight, and then you'll transition into the next phase where everything's a little bit heavier and then the reps change accordingly. 531, the, the main backbone of 531 just hinges on really one AMRAP set at whatever that percentage is. So 531 builds up over three weeks, drops back, builds up again, drops back. So you repeatedly see that same cycle and the, that 10 pound jump only comes every three to four weeks. Aggressive in the short term, but you can still ride that out for a very long time. So I do like wave loading, definitely has its place, just a little added element of complexity to it. 
Now, I'm going to get to step loading. I want to talk about step loading today because this is a method that we don't see that often that is very productive and can solve a lot of problems that you guys have in your training. The concept in Western culture, the, the pitfall that people fall into, is that you're not training unless you're doing something that's all out. So we love linear loading because it's just, it's common sense, right? You did something on Monday, next Monday you want to come in, you want to go heavier, you want to lift more weight. And looking forward, obviously you see how that's not sustainable because eventually you hit a brick wall, then what do you do? What does your training look like at that point? Because nobody wants to take pounds off the bar, right? Step loading is a way of kind of solidifying your mastery at a specific threshold and saving your jump until you've already kind of demonstrated that, okay, this is too easy. I've, I've done what I'm here to do. Then I'm going to level up, you know, in the next three or four week block. So instead of adding weight, instead of loading linearly in the short term, we keep the load the same. And then in one dramatic motion, we'll jump up to the next step where we're now dealing with a new load. So this example, three weeks at 60%, then three weeks at 70%. There's a lot of ways to step load. A common one for when you do see it pop up is just to add a rep. So you can start with your base volume workout, let's say five by six at 60%. That's a lot of sets, but that's pretty easy work. Most people aren't gonna struggle. That leaves us room to improve. So instead of improving the load, we can try to add a rep. Now the thing is volume increases dramatically when you add a rep or when you add a set. Adding load does not really drive the volume up that much. And you can work out the math on your own. The change in tonnage is a lot more dramatic when you're adding reps and when you're adding sets. So if you focus on that first, you'll find that you adapt to an ever increasing amount of volume a lot faster. And it's the increases in volume over time, the increases in your ability to handle tonnage in the first place that is going to cause muscular growth. So especially when you're talking about base building, getting your foundation, building muscle, building work capacity, this is a very good way to get yourself conditioned to higher amounts of volume. It's also a good way to clear out from that mentality that everything has to continuously get heavier all the time because it doesn't. You need chunks of training where you are not just chasing weight. You need time to let your joints recover, time to refine good habits, good movement patterns, and you need time to adapt to more volume. But if you're constantly chasing weight, you're not going to be adapting to more volume. This is actually one of the pitfalls that I don't like about a classical linear model is that you start out the first workout with the highest volume and it just goes downhill from there. Tolerance to volume is a skill that you build. So it stands to reason the first workout, you're probably gonna have your lowest tolerance to volume. So it doesn't make sense to start that out with the highest volume workout. A lot of programs have preparatory phases or a lot of programs will kind of ease you in. They'll save the bigger volume workouts for down the road. Step loading is a very good way to adapt to it so you actually get something out of it once you handle those monster volume workouts. So now that we have a handle on the principle, the idea of step loading, I wanna take that and see how we can kind of twist it around and make it work for us. It wasn't that long ago, I was reading through Shako's textbook uh, that was translated from Russian, and I was trying to get a handle on his training philosophy, specifically how he makes decisions work out to work out. The principles aren't that difficult to grasp. The actual decision-making when it comes to writing what appears to be very complex training templates, that's something that's easy to get hung up on, and it's easy to misinterpret what they're going for. So after digging through those templates and picking it apart and trying to control for how wildly variable different workouts were and how it seemed to be noise. It seemed that the changes in, in graphs and tonnage from workout to workout, week to week, were very chaotic and it was hard to get a pattern out of it. Eventually I realized that each block of training had a kind of ceiling associated with it where you wouldn't go past, let's say 80% in one phase. You would do a lot of sets, he likes pyramids, you would do a lot of sets building up close to 80% or 280%, and you would do some back off sets. But one day you might do several warm up sets. Another day you might do multiple sets at the highest percentage. Another day you might do more back off sets. And you could see that the volume was constantly changing, but the work you were doing at every rep range was about the same. If you did a set of five at 80% on week one, you weren't doing six at 80% the next week. You also weren't doing more weight the next week. A block, a, a four week block of training would have you top out with basically the same performance at the same rep range. The only thing that would change is how many sets you were doing. So when I saw that, that clicked and I actually applied it to some of my own training where instead of constantly trying to chase weight, especially in something like a volume block, I decided to just use it as an opportunity to build my tolerance to those thresholds. 
So that's when I started experimenting with step loading as kind of the principal backbone for this type of training where I wasn't getting caught up on making these aggressive jumps, but I was caught up on hanging out for a while, getting used to a certain threshold before I would try to level up and increase my performance. And the more advanced you get, by the way, the more valuable that's going to be. You, you're going to want to learn how to get training for extended periods of time that isn't necessarily all out or breaking you down. You want to learn how to plan out your big attempts down the road. This is a good way to do it. So let's say over a three week block, I put a ceiling up where I don't go above 75%. Now I'm not interested in trying to add weight each time and I'm not even interested in trying to add a new rep. The way I've done it for some of my heavier preps is week to week. The only thing that changes is how many sets I do building up. So week one, I might do, you know, five at 65, five at 70, five at 75 and call it a day. Pretty easy workout, right? Week two might be my biggest volume workout and I might do two at 65, two at 70 and I might do, let's say three sets of five at 75 and then even a back off set. And then maybe week three, I dial the volume back a little bit and I just do four sets at 75 and call it a day, even though the average intensity is the highest there, the volume's a little bit lower. Then the next week I might, or the next block, I might repeat that pattern. Now my ceiling's at 80 or 85% and I'm drawing out how long it takes before I actually get to those percentages. This is also a very uh, viable, very valuable method when you start to get to maximal training because you want to get out of your maximal training the benefit of having the stimulus of heavy weights without the beat down of constantly chasing absolute maximal performances. There's a time and place for maximal performances, but it shouldn't be the backbone of all of your training because it's not sustainable. So instead, if I'm trying to get used to the 90, 95% range, I will plan out singles and I might change how many singles I do. I might do one top set and do a few back offs. The next time, maybe I'll do a few singles at that heavy range but it's not this endless chase for more weight. I'm taking a, a chunk of weeks and I'm using that to adapt before I step up. So this principle has a lot of applications. It is not commonly used, or if it is used, it's not explicitly used, but you do find it pop up in kind of the backbone of some other methods of training. And it's a good counter to Western thinking, which is very much PR based. Your workouts have to be based around PRs. Of course, effort's important. And of course, there's a time and place for that. But I'm telling you guys, if everything you do year in, year out is based around programs that hinge on you hitting a PR, you're not just going to burn out. But when you do get stagnant, psychologically, you're not going to know how to recover from that and go back to foundational training that continues growth. So if for nothing else than to get a psychological handle on all the different ways that you can progress without having to beat yourself into the ground, I recommend incorporating some method of step loading at some time. Do it on a base building block where you're trying to get acclimated to volume before going heavy. Take six or eight weeks and just add to the amount of reps you can do at a given threshold without adding weight. Or better yet, if you are in a heavy block, instead of chasing maximal performances, build up your tolerance for singles at 90%. Don't go above, don't try to add reps, don't try to increase performance, just increase the amount of work you do. You will be absolutely amazed at how fast you grow. So I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of questions about this. I'll get to them in the comment section or better yet, go ahead and start a thread on the forum, empireforum.com. God, the forum's growing like crazy. I think we got over a thousand members now, a uh, bunch of good people. We have some actually really good lifters that contribute a lot to the conversation there. So go ahead and start an account, leave your questions there, start a thread, start a training log, start some controversy. There are no sacred cows there. All right. So uh, go ahead and leave your questions. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, this is Bromley at Empire Barbell. I'll see you.